Hello and welcome to Members on the Mic with the Troy Chamber of Commerce. I'm Tara Thompson Cusack, President and CEO of the Troy Chamber of Commerce, and I'm joined today by my lovely co-host, Sheila Denstad. Hello, all. <laughs> first, I'd like to take a moment to thank our presenting sponsor, Tryon Solutions. Stay tuned for our very first commercial break where you can learn how you can rely on Tryon. So, Sheila, we've got a great show ahead of us today. Why don't you all introduce our guest? I would love to, and I'm very <laughs> excited to have Marty Nolenberg here with us today. He is the owner of both the Sedona Tap House in Troy and in Novi. Marty was born in Detroit in 19-something and moved to <laughs> Oakland County in 19-something, too, and has been with o an Oakland County resident ever since. He went to Bloomfield Hills Lasser High School and graduated with a BA in history from Albion in 1980-something. In addition, Marty served as Oakland County Commissioner from 2003-2004, Oakland County Parks and Recreation Commissioner from 05 and 06, State Representative from 2007 to 2012, and Michigan State Senator from 2014 to 2018, and currently serves on the Troy Downtown Development Authority. Thank you for that. <laughs> Marty is also dedicated to the community as a member of uh, the Kiwanis Club, Duff Camp, the Troy Community Coalition, Novi Chamber of Commerce, and of course the Troy Chamber of Commerce, and is involved in Startup Charter School for the Building Trades. Marty, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Not, I mean, seriously, that's a good resume. I have to give you credit on that one. So obviously you are a man of service. I, I think I'm dating myself, though, when you, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but. When she, when she makes it from the 1900s, yeah, it sounds rough. <laughs> but yeah, we definitely know you're not of that range. You're good. So, but Marty, thanks for joining us. Um, obviously, one of the things as we're looking into the new year, the restaurant industry has been, was hit by COVID, I think from a substantial impact, if not one of the industries that was hit the hardest. Um, with that being said, we're hearing a lot about new proposals and new things that are coming down the pipeline, um, specifically that can affect not only the employees, but the restaurant owners and even the people who are dining out. Um, this is called something, I'm, we're hearing it as tips credit. And uh, we obviously were hearing a lot of different information, maybe some facts, maybe some fiction, but obviously you've been looking into this for quite some time. Can you tell us what this proposal is and about, a little bit about what's involved in that? Yeah, and, and actually just to step back, I mean, there was a ballot proposal that was uh, put together by out-of-state unions back in 2018. And essentially what the proposal would do, it would... Um, increase the minimum wage. Okay. It would um, uh, get rid of the tip credit, and it would um, initiate a uh, you know no call no sick three day proposal so that if an employee an employee could not show up and call in sick and the employee would have to pay. So that was the ballot proposal. Um, there's a ballot proposal, and the legislature essentially um, adopted that measure and then amended it. Okay. And, and so the, the, the minimum wage issue, in, in my mind, is not, um, and, and usually with these ballot proposals, there's always fine print, um, you know, there's um, a lot of information there that voters generally don't read, mm -hmm. and they, they hear this, <laughs> yeah. they, I mean, as a lawmaker, former lawmaker, I mean, it's, you see these bills, and, and it's, it's, it's legalese, mm -hmm. and so you don't really know the full story, um, there's always unintended consequences. I mean, not on purpose, but there just are because the law is very complicated. Yeah. And so this ballot proposal is very complicated. Um, also was, in my view, very misunderstood. Okay. Um, and, and so when, when people sign these ballot proposals, um, what they hear is this proposal will increase the minimum wage. And, and people, for the most part, uh, support oh, yeah. an increasing minimum yeah. wage. And... Um, and I don't, philosophically, I don't like the government telling my business what to pay my employees. But frankly, I can live with the increasing minimum wage and with you know, the pandemic <clears throat> and the cost going up. You know, our wages are way above what the minimum wage is. Well, and I think the thing is, is that we're talking about tipped employee. So I want to, yeah. I want to reiterate, I obviously minimum wage is one thing. Right. Tipped wage is a different and, thing. So tip wages, can you, so explain what a tipped yeah. wage is. Yeah. And that's, that's the bigger problem yeah. in all of this it, as it relates to us. Essentially by law, um, current law, we have to pay our tipped employees $3 and 84 cents an hour. Okay. And that goes up uh, every year. There's a formula and, and that's because they're receiving tips on yeah, that. And, okay. And, and so they get a reduced wage 
but in exchange for that reduced wage, they receive tips. Okay. And they're in our, in, I mean, statewide, the average server bartender makes about $25 an hour. And so um, the reason there's a lower wage is because it's offset by the tips. And so I know, you know, for me, it's like, what, what problem are we trying to solve with this? You know, our servers um, are making a very good wage. And they're happy with the idea of receiving tips because, you know, we're in the hospitality industry. And if they're hospitable and they're good at what they do, then they're rewarded via the tips. Well, and one thing, too, is that, say, for example, a server or a bartender they're making, like you said, the three, was it three eighty five? Three eighty four. So three eighty four an hour. If you if the server doesn't make, say they worked for two hours and they don't make the tips, it is still the restaurant's responsibility to pay the minimum wage, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's sort of one of the, the misunderstood, you know, facts of this proposal is okay. that um, your tip employees, none of them are making three dollars and eighty four cents an hour. Because, because they can't legally. Because legally, right. they can't. And so the employer okay. has to come up with the difference if their tips aren't reaching the current minimum wage, which is $10.10 an hour. Mm-hmm. So that get back filled in by the employer. So the employer has to make up the difference. And I can tell you that in the restaurant, most restaurants are not backfilling that yeah. because they're making far more money when you consider the tips plus the minimum wage. Yeah, and well, I, I think that's understandable. And I, I also think, obviously, there's going to be some restaurant setup times and things where they're not making tips. And that's understandable that if it levels out, mm-hmm. that they would still be making that minimum wage. And But the control of being able to make more is is a little bit of a luxury. I mean, I, coming, I was a bartender, and I, I loved knowing that I could possibly make way more than that. Well, you know, one of the things, I mean, I... My business has been very uh, varied, Mm -hmm. I should say. I've done a lot of different things. And, you know, when I first got into this industry, the thing that struck me the most was the passion that, you know, my people, the bartenders and the servers have for their guests. I mean, they like to serve and be hospitable and be engaging. And um, as a result, they they tend to be people, 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 Mm -hmm. uh, people, people, I guess. (laughs) such a thing. Um, it is a thing. I will say it's a thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so they, they have a, pa- and the good ones in particular have a passion like no other. And, you know, it's, it's to me, it, it's amazing to see and watch um, and to understand that these people love what they do mm-hmm. and that they're going to get rewarded for what they do. And, and that they, that's the beauty of what they, what they are offering is that they can be rewarded for, um, you know, great hospitality. And yeah. when you take that away, and, and, and that's what's going to happen. Well, let's you- talk about that, because I think that's the piece that we're missing in here. How is this going to change for the consumer? Because obviously, if, how is it going to change for that tipped employee? Like, yeah. does it mean that they're not going to get tips anymore? Um, is it going to change for the person who's dining out? What does that mean? I mean, when you increase the minimum wage from $3.84 an hour to uh, and actually with this, you know, ballot proposal at 12, to $12 an hour, that's a significant increase. Mm-hmm. And so the question that, you know, I would ask anybody, where does that money come from? Because, and it comes from the restaurant. Oh, of course it and, does. And so the restaurants are going to have to pass that cost on somehow. And if you look at other states and what they've done, there's a handful of states uh, that have gotten rid of this, California being one, I think Washington, Oregon, uh, Oregon are a couple other states. What they've done is they've, um, uh, you know, they, they've had to increase the menu pricing for the guest, number one. And number two, um, they've had to add a service charge to the bill. And, you know, we're not quite there yet here in Michigan, but based on what other states are doing, that's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And then and if people it, are seeing a service and charge, a service then are charge they going to be terping, tipping their staff? And, you know, uh, and you and I talked about this previously, and, and it, it, it takes away from the guest's ability to want to tip or not tip or to determine how much of a tip. Yeah. I mean, if, if the service is great, hopefully the server uh, gets a higher tip. If the service is not that great, then, you know, I think the guest is going to feel that they shouldn't deserve as much. And so when you take that ability away, um, I think it's going to have a dramatic effect on the guest experience. Um, and, and, you know, some of our, we're going to lose people. I mean, mm-hmm. because we can't afford to keep everybody. Um, I know for our two restaurants, 
and we just did preliminary numbers just on the tip portion of it, it's a half a million dollar hit. And, and that's per come restaurant, from correct? And that's just both, yeah. that's both restaurants. Oh, both restaurants. So that's okay. a minimum number. Um, so that's a big number that we have to try to overcome mm-hmm. just through the tip credit issue alone, uh, if that goes away. Well, go ahead. I was going to say, um, so within the tip credit, there's the time to share. What's that mean and who will it affect? And I, let me backtrack just a second more. Thank you for c- explaining this and clarifying this for our listeners. I think there are a lot of folks out there, including myself, who didn't truly understand yeah. until our last few meetings and especially right now. But if you could bring it back to time to share and what that means and who and that would affect. Yeah, and, and it, it is complicated. And it it's, is. it's difficult yeah. to yeah. kind of get it in simple sound bites and it's easy to say this ballot proposal increases the minimum wage. Everybody understands that. Right. But to your question, you know, that is also part of this proposal. And what does it do? You know, very simply, it allows an employee to not have to show up and not call and get paid up to 72 hours. And, and so imagine, you know, you're, you're, you know, trying to set up your evening schedule and you've got your cooks all lined up, you have your preppers lined up, you have your grill people all lined up, your servers all lined up, your bartenders lined up, and two of your kids call off. So imagine, you know, what that experience is to the guests because now the server, you know, the food's taking, you know, 45 minutes to get out because you have one cook and not three, or, mm-hmm. you know. So it's going to have a dramatic effect in terms of trying to provide the quality service that you want for your guests. And to me, it's just, it's irresponsible for someone to not show up and to not call. And look, if they're sick, oh, of course. I, I have, yeah. I, look, yeah. call me. Well, we're Just talking. Call, call us. If you're sick, I don't want you coming in my restaurant. Of because course. Because I don't want you getting my guests sick. I don't want my other employees to get sick. And I want you to get better. And this isn't an absence aspect. This is a no call, no show exactly. aspect, correct? And 100%. And so that's the issue. That's the problem that I have with the verbiage on this. It's not just, and, and people say, you know, do people don't deserve sick pay? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I'm not opposed to that. Of course. But I am opposed to don't have to show up, don't have to call in. I mean, how do you run a business when you don't know if that employee is going to show up or not? So you, your shift starts at, let's just say, 3 o'clock, you know, or 5 o'clock. And then you're, you, you're beginning your evening shift, and they don't show up at 5 o'clock. Now, I can't call anybody. I can try. I mean, I will try. Well, you can spend an hour and a half also taking the time because you you're go. worried about that employee making sure they're okay right? or safe. True. Sure. So it's just, it's, you know, the, the fine print in these ballot proposals are um, very problematic. And, and as a former lawmaker, we were always tweaking, modifying bills, and there's always unintended consequences. I mean, the best bill um, could be uh, the worst bill tomorrow. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean today might, it might make perfect sense, but, you know, tomorrow, next week, or next month, you got to have the ability to change it. And with these ballot proposals, you can't that easily because the legislature needs a 75% vote to override a ballot proposal. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, guys, I think this is a good moment to take a quick break from our presenting sponsor, Try and Solutions. We'll be right back. How do these business owners find the time for peace of mind? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Welcome back to Members on the Mic with the Tri Chamber of Commerce. We are here with Marty Nolenberg with from Sedona Tap House. So, Marty, obviously, we're talking through some of the tips credit and what this looks like from a propo- or I guess proposal standpoint. Is it a proposal for the policy? Is it a policy? Well, actually, the there was a ballot proposal, and the legislature, um, through their authority, adopted the ballot proposal. Okay. Okay. And then um, they amended it. So we'll get through some of that okay. piece in a bit. Okay. Right. But with, with that being said, this was brought up, obviously, for a reason. Uh, the reason is always to solve a problem. Like you mentioned before, that a problem today may not be the same problem tomorrow. But there must have been a problem that they tried to solve. But what is the problem? And what are we <laughs> trying to solve here, I guess? You know, that's the million-dollar question. <laughs> and, and, and I'd love to ask uh, those petition uh you know, drivers that, I mean, they were from, they're out of state, um, folks that came into Michigan that pushed this thing. And so I, and my question is, what is the problem that we're trying to solve? And, and I think I know the problem that they're trying to solve, and that is to increase the wage for 
um, the working person. Of course. And I'm not opposed to that. But this proposal does not do that, as, as we sort of have outlined thus far, because when you eliminate a tip credit, it's going to increase the cost. Um, it's going to increase the price of the menu to the guest, so it's a bad guest experience. Yeah. And, and the employees essentially are going to be stuck with this service charge. Uh, empl- I mean, they're going, to get, they're going to get stuck with the higher wage, but because of the service charge, the service charge is going to make up the difference of their uh, increased minimum wage, and they won't see the benefits of the increased tips. So I guess that's my question. Right. We're, we're hearing from, obviously, the Michigan Restaurant Association, and they're saying that th- as they did their survey to these tipped employees, so your bartenders, your servers, your busboys, yeah. uh, they don't want it. It was like an 80% ratio that they don't want this. So while, of course, I want to talk about how this is going to affect restaurants and the consumer, if the problem was to help the employee and the employee is seeing this, that it's going to actually hurt their amount of money that they can bring in. Can you can you talk through that piece as you have a large staff that you've been speaking with? I mean, I I I, I think the the employers are you know they're in the mix of this. Of course, they know they they know the business, they know the value that they bring to the guest, and you know when you when you get rid of their incentive to be hospitable and to earn more wage, they know how bad it. They they know it's going to affect them financially, mm-hmm. and 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 that's why they're opposed to it because. You know, if you have to go to a service model route and that they're not seeing any of that, then, you know, how are they going to make, you know, on average $25 an hour? That's a statewide mm-hmm. uh, number that the Michigan Restaurant Association has uh, done in, through polling. And so when I mean, you think about it, you know, the average server makes $25 per hour. And so when you take that away and you're stuck at $12 an hour, they, they see the problem with, you know, not being able to get to, get to that level. Yeah, and they, I, they get it. They're in this business. They know the business better than the average folks. So, uh, folks do, and mm-hmm. uh, it's complicated. It's really complicated. And you know, these sound bites are platitudes. Yeah, you know, they're not. You know, there's you know, the fine print, as they always say. I mean, that's what a ballot proposal. There's you know, uh, you know, the whole page is not longer, and it's difficult. For people to, you know, they never read it when they sign the ballot proposal. <laughs> we say this, but we're like, it's a well, lot, no, it's a mean, lot of words. But they're yeah. standing on a street corner and they, 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 they do you want to increase the minimum wage? And of course. Yeah. And they sign it, but they, they don't, they're not standing in a, a parking lot, you know, uh, reading the entire language. And there's, you know, as a lawmaker, former lawmaker, um, I mean, you, you had to be very careful that, you know, the first sentence, you know, wasn't the whole bill. Yeah, it's the, you know, the had, dominant sentence, yeah. and that's yeah, it. Yeah, and, and certain words have certain meanings, and um, I'm not trained as a lawyer, but I had staff that, you know, um, you know, had some of, that, some of that experience, and then we had legal counsel as well, and so you would, you know, try to figure out what the pros and the cons were and what the unintended consequences are, and that's really the key point, I think. Well, and I think everyone is, I, I, I mean, I... I you look at the, if you look at the rate for minimum wage, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to get minimum wage and then I'm going to get my tips on top of it. Well, that's not what is the outcome. And I think that's the part where there's a lot of fear and misconception. And yes, of course, some of them are still going to absolutely get great tips on top of that. But you are seeing a service charge. And we all know in restaurant industries, once you see that, you're like, oh, that's the built-in gratuity and you walk out the door. And I, I mean, I'm and, a person who tips on top of, of it. Well, and that's just it. Server, t- and they get none of that. And that's going to be something that we obviously want to convey. I mean, I would always want to tip more on top of that, but a lot of people aren't going to know because this is already confusing enough, as you mentioned, through the fine print. So, well, yeah. you know what, Tara? I yeah. think this is a good segue into um, our favorite segment. Ooh, <laughs> I think that's a really good idea. Well, I think one of the things that we can talk about our favorite segment today, which is our hospitality committee, really is showing right here because there's an education component within that group, which is actually open to all of those in the hospitality world, so restaurateurs and hoteliers. We can connect people not only to folks like Marty who can educate them, but to the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau to update them on tourism coming to the area, events happening in our area, and then to local officials who can tell them about businesses coming to the area. And again, it's a great place to learn about proposals like this and other ones that will be coming down the pipeline. So um, for those of you that are Troy Chamber members, it's the third Wednesday of every month from Mm -hmm. 9 to 10 a.m. We'd love to see you there.
Well, and that's really good to know. But I, I think that's a really good point. Uh, when we were at our hospitality meeting, it was interesting. You brought this up at the hospitality yeah. meeting. And so many people who own restaurants, who have tipped employees, there were so many in the room who did not even know that this was coming in the pipeline. They had no idea of this. And just to be able to have this open dialogue, it was really a wonderful experience because A, agree or disagree is not is not the point. The point is knowing and having the knowledge to make your decisions. And I was really impressed with the fact that it was brought to the table. And I was also very sad that not as many people knew about it that we thought should have. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, we just haven't done a good job of... Uh, letting people know and it's, it's awareness, it's, it's education and it's information overload. And, you know, restaurants are, restaurant owners are great people, they're great owners, but they're focused on running their shift. Yeah. And we, we say shift, we, we're talking about the restaurant on a day to day basis. It's very complicated. Um, that's what they're focused on. They shouldn't have to worry about what lawmakers do or petition drives and, and, you know, they'll, they'll figure it out, but you know, you're making it really difficult mm-hmm. for them. And there's going to be some cost and, and, you know, we all want certainty in business. We all want certainty in life. And when you take that away, there's a huge adjustment. And, you know, I worry that, you know, we're going to lose some fantastic servers and bartenders. Yeah. They're going to take a financial hit. Um, my guests are going to see increases in prices, you know, and, and you brought the question up. What problem are we trying to solve? And, yeah. and I just don't see it. Yeah. Well, Marty, you mentioned the adopt and amend. So, A, what is that? Yeah. Um, and, B, can you explain it to us? Yeah, and, it, and, and that's another complicated... Uh, <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> ...you know, issue as well. So when, when the petition gatherers reach their, you know, target signatures to be, to be able to put it on a ballot, you know, the legislature has the ability to uh, adopt it. You know, instead of it going to the voters for a vote, the legislature can just simply adopt it with a simple vote majority. And, and um, they did that. And, but, at, you know, shortly thereafter, they also amended the proposal to make it more palatable. So essentially they slowed the growth of the minimum wage increase. Uh, they allowed for the tip wage, which is really a tip credit. They left the tip credit alone. Um, and then they also eliminated this no sick, uh, this, this sick pay, uh, no call, um, no show proposal altogether. And so the, the ballot gatherers raced off to the courts, and this has been going on since 2018. Um, and so a judge last summer essentially said that you can adopt, um, you can amend, you just can't amend it in the same legislative cycle. And so it was in the current cycle, and so uh, the judge essentially said you can't do that. And, but I will, I'll put a stay on this, and it won't go into effect until... February 17th. And so obviously... That's coming soon. It's yeah. coming soon. And so obviously the other side that, you know, uh, like the Adopt and Amend proposal, Michigan Restaurant Association, other business groups went off to the courts. And so right now we're waiting for the appellate court because the first decision last August was by the lower court. So the appellate court will now decide if what the legislature did is constitutional or not. So um, regardless of that decision... Probably what will happen is the opposing side will then race to the courts after this next decision is made. So ultimately, um, it will probably get this. It will reach the Supreme Court, whether the Supreme Court takes it up or not. Who knows? So if they take it up or don't take it up, uh, then you might see some legislative yeah. action. So, you know, we talked about how complicated it is. There's, a, there's, there's steps here. And, and so I guess, you know, my personal feeling is that this issue is not going away. And I want to get in front of this to try to educate people about the impact of this. And just because we're talking about it today, it's not going away. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, we need to talk about it three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, because it always comes back. Because there's always an outside group that wants to come in and change it. Mm-hmm. And, and like I said earlier, they'll add stuff to the fine print. You know, this, this no pay, uh, no show, no, no uh, call. I mean, that was an add-on. That was a tease. That was something they put in there but didn't really explain very well. Yeah. And, and so this issue's not going away. It's my hope that, you know, forums like this, and I really appreciate you calling me up and yeah. asking me to do this because I think it's important to try to get this message out and, 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 and hopefully people will listen and understand the issue 
because it is complicated. It I mean, is. It's, 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 it's really complicated. And, uh, and, and our, you know, restaurants, we have put out several memos to try to educate our staff on this issue. Um, because they, you know, like I said, they, they're, focused on taking care of their guests and not reading, uh, yeah. you know, state law journals. And their livelihood's at stake. Yeah, and it is, 100%. So it's our job to kind of, I think, to educate yeah. um, the general public, too, I think. Well, with all that being said, too, where, based on your background, where could someone grow truly if they wanted to read this? Where would they go? Where would they look Good this question. up? How could they find the actual information that's out there? Well, the, the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association is probably the best resource. Um, and, and they've been very vocal on this issue. They've been, uh, you know, lobbying, um, advocating for the adopt and amend and, 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 and educating lawmakers. And, you know, the problem they have right now is that it's a new term. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, all new lawmakers. And so they've got to go back um, and, and lobby with the new uh, lawmakers and educate them. Um, so it's it's an evol it's an it's it's an always an evolving educational process, and so I would start with the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association. Uh, call me. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm Everyone call to, Marty. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to uh, you know educate people, and I'm looking for uh, you know places and opportunities to sort of educate people, and I think it's important that we just stay in front of this, yeah. you know, throughout. Well, Marty, and we appreciate that. Is there any other last bit or nugget you'd like to share with us before we wrap up? Um, you know, you always, uh, you know, that's always a, a, a question that comes at the end. And, um, <laughs> you just and, don't want this to and, end, and do I, you? And I feel like, I, you know, we talked enough. Um, <laughs> I, you know, so I, I, the only thing I would add is just it's a very important issue. Um, you know, a lot of restaurant owners aren't really aware of this. A lot of the servers aren't really aware of this. They should be. I hope mm -hmm. that they will become more aware of this. Um, and and look, we want them to earn a great wage. We want them to love their what they do, um, and we want our guests to have a great experience. And and so we've said this a few times before, but you know, I, this you know, what problem are we trying to solve? Yeah. And this this what they think they're trying to solve. I don't think it's being solved. Well, and I think, Marty, one of the good points of this is that people may agree or people may disagree with what we're, what's being said right now. But the reality is, is the facts are missing sometimes. And it's to do your due diligence, understand the facts, read through it, know how this is going to affect you. And you're still able to choose whatever side you want to. I, got, I mean, I don't want to say pick sides per se, but if you don't know the real information, you can't just come up with your decision. So it's really, I'm glad you're here to help give some clarity around what's going on, give some of the facts and help people to realize where they can look to read into this and make their own decisions on what this is going to do to not only the restaurant industry, but the people who work there as well. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 100%. That's a good Very way well I, I wrapped it for you. So, ooh, so uh, Marty, thank you so much for joining us. And that's all we have here on Members of the Mic today. Thank you so much for joining us. Special thanks to Marty Nolenberg from Sedona Tap House for giving us some information on this tips credit and everything that's going on. And finally, thanks to our presenting sponsor, Tryon Solutions. Guys, for more information on joining the chamber or joining our hospitality committee, because obviously you can see the validity and value on that, uh, go to TroyChamber.com. Thanks so much and have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys. Bye-bye, y'all. Thank you.